Okay, so this is good. This is gonna be post commentary. Well, this part when I'm trying to get the world four star because, well, yes, yeah, so that's how you get up here. You have to double bounce. I recommend bouncing at that area, like close to the platform, while you're you know going down, because it's a huge bitch to get up there. Make sure the key is still there. But I mean, if you go left, of course the key is gonna go away. But you can always rewind to make the key go back onto the platform, so don't worry about that. Because unlike the freaking- Oh yeah, this is a major screw up. Freaking Goomba! You've destroyed me! But with- but with- And unfortunately I rewound a bit too much. Way too much. So I screwed myself, but damn, that's a big jump. So it just cuts like, you know, when I got the key up there again. And this time, what you're supposed to do is to bounce the Goomba up there. Make sure you rewind when you're going down, so that when you rewind, you're going back up as you're bouncing the Goomba up. You have- when you're going backwards, go- you have to go up as the Goomba's going up, so that when you land on the platform, because you were going up, you can bounce the Goomba back up again. And then you rewind here, and then- that's the hard part. You have to get the key from the Goomba without killing him. Easier said than done. Now you have to do some little rewinding and shuffling and shuffling, 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 and you have to give the key to the Goomba. Okay, now I'm just being like a comment you know, walkthrough player, but this is post commentary and I'm um this video is already edited. So like here I did like look up, you know, on a YouTube video I think where you know how to do do this and all. Thankfully, your fickle your fickle companion, the key, although it's fickle, can still be rewound, so this is it is not time immune. I wanna get the key, Goomba. 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 Simba. Yes, we got it. We got the key. The Goomba's got the key. You've got the key! And now since the Goomba's time immune, uh, the key's not affected, but we are. So that's an important part. Get the, Goom the Goomba on the left side of the door and stop its sirens. Now, make sure to kill the Goomba on the left side of the ladder. Left side of the ladder. Otherwise, you'll screw yourself so much it'll hurt like hell. And now, here it is. The star! Hey there, guys! This is my hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Braid. Apparently we're done with, with the game, since we've completed all five levels, except I don't know about World 1. And apparently the bathroom is useless, but let's not think about that right now. Let's go and collect the final star, I mean not the final star, no, there's like three more stars to collect, what are we saying, my hello? But I'm going to collect one more star before the finale, because there's like, actually, in this episode, I will show you how to get the star in World 4 that I skipped, but I'm gonna... Here's the catch. I'm going to collect the star after I go through the final level. Because there's still one more level. Or world. I'm gonna collect the star after the final world, which will be featured in the finale next episode. So me, the footage of me getting the star in this episode, in World 4, will be after I record it, the next episode. Do you get that? There is a big reason why I want to do this. There's a big reason why I want to go into the final world with six stars, not seven stars. Well, that has a lot of spoilers already, but yeah, let's go into wrong place. Um, yeah. So, this is where the last star is located. Not the last star, this is not the last star. There are three more stars, but the last star I want to collect before the finale. And yeah, I'm already saying that, you know, the finale is, you know, the next episode. I mean, this game is pretty short. Like, um, like, this was a very popular g game when it was released, but one thing that people complained about was the price to game length ratio, because on Braid, this is pretty expensive. So, yeah. And considering how short this game is, because this game is pretty short, very short, like, I pretty much be like, a th three quarters of the game on a road trip and this road trip was a good road trip because you know it's back to like one of my old hometowns so I kind of associate this game a lot with you know the revisit to my old home hometown like the music in this game like from downstream to long past gone to torment by heart all those songs kind of remind me or a lot of I said those songs kind of remind me of my old hometown which even though I said I don't really have a hometown so it's not moved around a lot it's the hometown as you know okay now I know it's a hometown that I associate with, with my childhood the most. So yes, what you want to do is summon this bunny. However, do not kill it, but do not let it kill you. <laughs> this is like a Tim's face, he's like, Urgh! 
However, do not collect the key. The key is not important. Now what you want to do is keep the bunny on this elevator. Jump over him if you need to, since that'll keep him, you know, make him change directions. Do not make the bunny go off the elevator. Also, it's best if you slow down time so that it makes avoiding the bunny easier, since the bunny is a bunny of death. This bunny is so violent. I mean, look at his face. Not a good move. Keep time slowed down to keep yourself alive. Now, lure the bunny away from the switch. Away from the switch, I said. And, let's see, slow down time here. Keep away from me, bunny! Do not go on the elevator! Or jump on my head. Same thing, really. That's not good. Okay, let's redo this. Redo! You know, this kind of reminds me of the one Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Odd Parents episode, where Timmy wishes for a watch that, re that reduces time, and whenever he makes a mistake, you know, they go like, Rito! And he goes back to like a, um, he rewinds a, a bit, and they can do the same thing, you know, but differently. Which is kind of the same concept as Braid, where you can rewind time to fix a mistake you've made. Unless, of course, you know, the mistake is time immune, like a Goomba that's time immune. Or like, you know, there's shadows, or like, if you move forwards and time progresses, but yeah. I like that episode, the one fairly odd person where, like, you know, you can redo time. Where Cosmo was like, the watch. Now, it's important to keep the bunny on the top flat platform. It is very important. Now, of course, you don't have a ring anymore, but that's a... Actually, <laughs> I lied. We need the ring. <laughs> you can you know, collect it from the elevator since it's you know, close by, and you're in the range of collecting it anyway, so why not? So, jump and collect. But yeah. I think in the... So, I'm recording this on the same day I recorded the last episode, and this will probably this be the same day I record the finale too. So, yeah. Or at least the first part of the finale, since there's going to be like multiple parts. Spoilers! How many spoilers in this episode? Jeez! I just want to make my intentions clear so that you're not confused. I mean, I had to explain the whole star thing because it's a very crucial thing to do, in my opinion. But yeah, um, so on the date this is recorded, Jagger Conroy has yet to release his next episode of Majora's Mask. And in the, in the yesterday's episode, he mentioned the Fairly Odd Parents. Like, I don't know, like for me... It was a good show, but I felt like it's something that kind of abused its, you know, pro star status. And, and then, like, near the end, like, at one point I was, like, very ticked off at how scientifically incorrect it was. Like, there's this one April Fool's episode where this one Jester dude tries to, you know, make a rocket collide with the moon so that it bounces around and causes the world to freeze over by blocking the sun. All I can say about that is, DUDE! Ever heard of a solar eclipse? No, I messed up. But yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a solar eclipse where the moon is between the Earth and the sun. But no, apparently, like in the show, it's where the moon blocks the sunlight, you know, from this, blocks the Earth from the sunlight so that it freezes over and such and such. This is very, this is very hard, of course. What you want to do is do the same thing as you did before, but stay on the ladder and make sure the platform, you know, locks the ladder while you are time immune. So this little. No, oh, that's weird. I jumped a lot. See, there's li little room for error. But then, yeah, about the very odd parents, like the one um, movie about not movie, but like you know, live action, you know, movie thing where you know, Crocker and ends up there's like the muffin, and like there's this one subplot where a monkey wishes for a monkey world, and so the whole world is like you know, infested by monkeys. And then like I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. What? Why are you slowing down? Well, for one thing, like, you know Chester? His voice changed so much, it was disgusting. He sounded like, he sounded like a hill hillbilly rat. He sounded like, like a rat. And I hated that voice change, since it already, you know, his voice already changed before in the previous season, and then his voice changed for the worse. Like, I, I like his first and second voices, but not the third one. And, you know his friend, you know Timmy's friend AJ? That, um, black bald guy, who's just genius? I think he went through a personality change or something. Because he turned into a dickhead. He turned into a complete douchebag. Or maybe that's, you know, Timmy's friend is like, you know, the one that Timmy's, you know, friends with is the clone of AJ. And the douchebag AJ is the real one, since AJ apparently clones himself and all. But yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the fairly odd parents. But yeah, Chugga. I mean, in yesterday's episode, Chugga Conroy mentioned that how there's a live action fairly odd parents movie. So I had to look at one, one Wikipedia. And oh my god. 
How the hell can he do this to us? Why not? Why Nickelodeon? Why? Okay, um, rewind. You want to rewind at the top speed, but don't rewind too much. But yeah, how could you do this to us, Nickelodeon? I mean, come on, what the f- what the hell? You can- Oh, that's bad. Rewind. No, do this again. I don't want the ring to appear there. I mean, I meant to climb down the ladder, but I guess I missed. So, I put the ring down instead. So that's kind of annoying in this level, since... If you want to climb the ladder, but you're, you know, too short from the ladder, you put the ring down. And if you rewind time... I, I need the ring to come with me, so... Okay, this is very annoying, of course. I mean, I did this yesterday when I practiced, and after many tries, I got it. So, this will take some time. Like, it's very annoying since Tim has to stay in the ladder as it falls down. And then I have to rewind, and then I have to stop rewinding at the perfect time. Okay, there we go. No, 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 no! No, shit! Okay, I realized what I was doing wrong. You're supposed to latch onto the ladder as it falls down. Like, not after it fell down, but as it falls down. Like, as it's falling down. Like this, and then you rewind. Oh, come on, what? But you have to rewind and stop rewinding at the perfect time. Which is when the platform goes back to its original state of locking the ladder into place. But you have to do it before, I guess, your time immunity, you know, laps, you know, stops, and you somehow teleportate back to where you were before the time immunity. It's complicated. This puzzle's a bitch. But I got it, so that's what comforts me. I got this puzzle when I practiced. Unlike the World 4 one, I still have to get. No! 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 <laughs> okay, there we go. What I did wrong was I latched onto the ladder a bit too late. You have to latch onto it as soon as possible, so that your time immunity will stop as soon as the platform locks the ladder into place. Yeah. So, now here we are back to the bunny. Bunny! Well, okay, now put the ring here and rewind. Actually, no, I screwed up. Okay, first, no time immunity. Don't be time immune. Now put the ring down and then... Now rewind time. No, 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 actually, shit, 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 shit. Okay, 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 let's think this through. Let's be like man. <laughs> let's be like man, what? Okay, come on, bunny, bounce. Bounce, bunny, bounce. It's not like green sleeves, this song. When it's slowed down and all. Actually, let's rewind a bit more. The thing is, the thing is, the bunny's supposed to be bouncing. Actually, let's try this again. I mean, I did it. Actually, let's lure the bunny more to the right. Now, place the ring here. Actually, no, 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 no. This is so hard, I know. This is a hard game, for sure. Okay, now. Let's try this again. Bounce on the bunny. Okay. Let's try it. Let's do a new approach. Lure the bunny more to the left. And place the ring here. Now. Do this. Okay, okay, I think we have it. We've got it, we got it. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. No, this is the... I mean, for me, I got this on my first try. What the hell? Okay, now the bunny should be bouncing. Okay, that's bad. Okay, rewind slowly so that you don't rush it. And then rewind too much. The bunny will be slowed down so you can... Jump. Yes! 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 We've got it. We've... <laughs> we've got... The... F star. We've got all stars in World 6. Now... That took a long time, but... Now it's time for us to go to the final world. As you can see, in the previous episode, I climbed up here and there's no ladder, or the ladder was removed. Now, the ladder is here. It's been shifted from th the right to here. As you may notice, the colors correspond to the worlds we've been in. Green, World 2, where everything was green, you know, all peaceful now. World 3, yellow, the whole background was yellow. Blue, time and place, World 4, it was a blue background. Purple, light purple, World 5, which represents the shadows, like how the purple things like, you know, time immune and all. 
or I mean, in can interact with your shadows, and purple, hesitance, as it is the darkest level. Like, you notice how, as we progress to the game, the world became darker and darker and darker. But yes, now here we, here we are at the attic. And now, this is it. Oh, this is World 1. What's his name? But this is it. This is World 1. Let's read some stories. At a cafe on a bright plaza, most customers sit back, feeling the warmth of the sun, enjoying the cold drinks. But not Tim. He barely notices the sun. He doesn't really taste his coffee. For him, this corner affords a good view of the city. And in the, di and in the teeterings of the passersby, in the arc of a shop, shop girl's hand as she displays tea to an interested gentleman, Tim hopes to see clues. Okay, so it is a setting. That night at the cinema, fictitious adventures lunge implausibly across the screen. screen. The audience here is mixed. Some are patrons of the cafe, cafe, now sitting excitedly in the plush chairs, eager for another new flavor, for distraction from the boredom of their easy lives. <laughs> yeah. Others, other seats hold fishermen and farm workers, hoping to get, forget their toils and rest their hands. Hmm, kind of reminds me of time and mystery with the painting where, you know, he drinks wine. Tim, here, Tim is here too, but he is scrutinizing the gloss on the lips on the screen, measuring the angle of the plume of a distant helicopter crash. This is kind of an insight into Tim's personality, but we'll get into that more later on. He thinks he discerns a message. When the cinema closes and most of the audience strolls down the plaza to the south, Tim goes north. Wait, what? Why are, you going, why are you going the opposite way? Tim? People like Tim seem to live oppositely from the other re residents of the city, tide and riptide, flowing against each other. Going opposite, huh? Tim is very different from everybody. He is very different. Tim wants, like nothing else, to find the princess. Oh, it's the princess again. To know her at last. For Tim, this would be momentous, sparking an intense light that embraces the world. A light that it reveals the secrets long kept from us, that illuminates or materialize us a final palace where we can exist in peace. I want you to keep this passage in mind. Type it down or something. Keep this in mind. Okay? This is very insightful. I mean it. But how would this be perceived by the other residents of the city in the world that flows contrarywise? The light would be intense and warm at the beginning, but then flicker down to nothing, taking the castle with it. It'll be like burning down the place we've always called home, where we've played so innocently as children, destroying all hope of safety forever. Think about that, okay? That's very important. And now, let's go. Wait, why is the fourth door the first one we can go in, in instead of the first one? We're going to World 1-4. Oh, it's a flower. Oh, pretty flower. Now, what is the gimmick of World 1? Everything goes in reverse motion. That's right. Also, you notice that the music is also reversed too. This is downstream reversed. Yes, everything is in reverse except Tim is going in. F oh, the flowers shriveling, or is it, or is it going in reverse? Yes. Um, everything is reversed, obviously. So now we have to wait for something to happen. Like, there's a cannon here too, so... Obviously, a Goomba should be coming up, right? Um, right? Hmm. Let's see here. Maybe we should do something else with these Goombas here. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do with them. Bounce their heads, so that... This Goomba... It's like, if you bounce their heads, they go back from death and are alive again. Now use this Goomba as it will jump back up. Shit. As it will jump back up and use it as a platform to get to the door. Everything is in reverse motion, so keep in mind of that. This is... I really love this level, love this world because it is so clever. I mean, everything is in front, you know, reverse motion, which is something you'd expect. I mean, how many people expected this to happen in World 1? Where everything is reversed. Because I know one person said, oh, they know what you know, World 1 is concerned with. Oh, the flower's going, shriveling up more. What's up with the... Okay, now we don't have a way to get back. Or do we? Actually, before the Goomba, 
goes back to life. Or go back goes back to the original cannon. Let's bounce on some Goomba's heads, shall we? Let's bounce on, bounce on your head. Bounce on your head completely um, continuously. That would mean bouncing on your head before so that you can follow the Goomba. So yeah. Not like that, but like not like that, but Yeah, like that. Now bounce on this Goomba again. Because you want to follow the Goomba to the platform on the left. On the left. And remember this is the third part of downstream, where it's like the da 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 Yeah. The music is amazing. I love this. And now wait, don't freeze up. And now we are here. At Braid. And the flower has gone back to its original state. But we will find out what the deal is with the final level. Which is incidentally the one on the very left. We will see in the finale. See you guys then. <laughs>